one-handed backhand is dead. Nobody hits a one-handed backhand anymore. That came up a couple of weeks ago when Stefano Tsitsipas, as the last one-handed player, fell out of the top 10 on the ATP tour, and then everybody freaked out. And I think that's absolutely not right. There are still plenty of one-handed backhand players on a recreational level. And one of the questions that I get a lot is, what does the non-dominant hand do, when, and why? And in this video, I'm gonna give you all the details. The offhand, for me, it's the left, is an absolute equal partner to the dominant hand, for me, my right. And it has a role to play from the very beginning of the shot to the very end, at the finish. It starts with helping you find your grip with the dominant hand, of course. The left hand, in the preparation of the one-hander, should be on the throat of the racket. Not holding it here, not holding it here. Just let the racket loosely rest in your left hand. And there's two ways that you can change your grip. Either the left hand moves the racket and your right is fairly loose, and then when you're in the proper grip, you then grip the racket. You are in your eastern backhand grip. Or you just stabilize with your offhand the racket and your right hand moves. Once you've found your grip, the next step is super crucial. Your left hand helps to get a really good coil here. It actively brings your upper body back and it also lifts the racket. So you wanna look like something like this here. The racket head is over your dominant hand and it is all of the left hand that gets you into this position. This position here, the racket lift, is the start of your loop. And if you have it up here, that basically gives your racket a little bit more of a distance. It can travel and then pick up some pace before you actually pull up and forward to your contact point. And it's basically just gravity pulling on the racket and it's dropping down. And this loop here, also, of course, still has the left hand attached, and it only ends when the left hand then releases around your hip. And this is when the right really takes over and pulls up and forward to contact point. However, the left hand is not done yet. Before the left hand releases, though, you also want to get into the lowest part of the racket drop. Again, just gravity, and that is when the racket head is below your hand. And it is also at that point that you should get into the lock-in position. And that is the butt cap pointing to the ball. And it's basically the equivalent of the lag that we have on the forehand. Because I'm starting to pull on the grip here, the racket head, which is heavier than the grip, lags back a little bit. And I got my butt cap pointing to the ball. And just as with the lag on the forehand, that's a position that you shouldn't force. If you hold on to your racket loosely enough, you will get into this position. Okay, so the offhand separates from the racket and we're starting our forward swing, but the left hand's job is not over. It still has a really crucial role to play and that is where a lot of recreational players go wrong. Either they've been not taught correctly or they're watching the pros again a little too much and trying to emulate the things that we see with the naked eye. And one of them is that really aggressive one-handed players like Musetti, Moresmo, uh, Paris, uh, Tsitsipas, of course, they finish like this. And the left hand in that moment, long after the ball is gone, looks like it's coming around. It does not it does actually exactly the opposite. Your left hand actually acts as a counterbalance and you're either leaving it down and back here, so it's literally going into the opposite direction of your right hand, or it even comes up. And that is totally your own secret sauce. Doesn't matter which one you do, but what you don't do is this. You're not bringing your left hand around almost as if you're hitting a two-hander, because that really leads to massive inconsistency and a boatload of shanks. The left hand separating and then going down and back or even a little bit further up helps you balance and it helps you not rotate open so that at contact point 
your breastbone is actually still pointing somewhat to the net post, to the left net post for me as a right-hander. So that is all left hand. Now another reason why falsely we're thinking sometimes that the left hand is coming around is when a one-hander aggressively moves outside and they're then ending up like this. But that is part of the recovery here. They have already caught their balance, but at moment of contact, they're still side on. And the left hand still stays back. It's again, only after the ball is long gone, the hip fully swings around, and that is to catch your balance. And again, that is right here, like walking on a tightrope. You wouldn't let this dangle there, like a dead fish. So there you have it. What does the left hand do, when, where, and why? And if you have any more questions relating to tennis, you should check out my Patreon membership platform because we have a monthly live coaching call where I'm addressing anything technical, tactical, and mental skills-wise. And, and of course, there are some more perks, so do check it out.